Well, hello, everybody. It's Dr. Hank, and you know what we do here at Agent Wealth Success. We help you to build your business, to build your wealth, and to have you flying with the angels, quite frankly, to feel better and and uh, be better and do better. And so we have uh, just, you know, I have amazing guests on every uh uh, every week, and they're the top people in our industry. And uh, in fact, today I have one of the top uh, previously Berkshire uh, Hathaway's agents in the United States. And you know, they're a high end, great company. And uh, he was so good that he ended up uh, getting into people said, Look, can you teach me? And so that's what he does. He teaches other people. He has an amazing background. He was, uh, uh, in the Marines, in fact, uh, uh, flying helicopters, became a pilot, and and uh, from there he's uh, worked under Jack Confield and worked with uh, Jack uh, uh, Canfield, Stephen uh, Covey, that uh, all the big names. So he's like one of the big names, if you will. And one thing I love about him too, he says on his bio that he's married. Uh, he has one daughter, and then he has several four-legged friends, and I love those four-legged friends. So with that, Steve Tornaton, welcome to the show. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Hank. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm and your joy for life, and I, I, I feel elevated just from that introduction. We could stop now. I could go be high the rest of the day after that. Yeah, this is way better than any drugs I was taking in the 60s. <laughs> and uh, so that's fantastic that, yeah, we're high flying here. And uh, and I just know you're just such a blessing. You know, you're into some other things that really are helpful and meditation and um, and, and something called RIM. And I think I'd like to talk about that at some point uh, as well. But uh, let's start. And I kind of like to, to kind of write, uh, get right into it. And so tell me that, um, like, if there were one thing right now that, what would you think is, say, the best thing for people to connect with you? What do you have to offer? You know, and again, we realized you were just this top selling guy and, and in real estate and became so good that you teach, you know, you're the teacher of the best, if you will. And, and so um, what's your secret? What, what, what gets your blood flowing and, and uh, gets your vibration to rise, my friend? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty big question that, uh, yeah. That that open to, uh, to basically unlock all of that or to expand <laughs> on that it would take a while. Yeah, I uh, I, I have to tell you, sales is like um, uh, it can be scary. You know what I mean? There's something about it that uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, it's not for wimps, and yeah. uh, it's really interesting because when I got started in selling, the reason I got started in selling is because I got laid off after 9/11. I was an airline pilot. Wow. And 9-11 hit, I got laid off and wow. uh, nobody's hiring. Nobody wants me. I put resumes everywhere and they said, Steve, we think you're a really cool guy, a likable guy, but we don't have a job for you. Yeah. So it's that old story. When you fail in life, you go into sales. And I <laughs> went into sales and everybody said, Steve, you'll be good at this. You're, you know, people like you. And I thought, wow, I, I could, I started seeing dollar signs before I even got a job, you know, just from people telling me that. Yeah. And what happened was uh, I got into sales. I was selling printing. I was selling trade show displays. And what happened, it was really disappointing. And that is that I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I was a rock star at making friends. I had a lot of friends and they would go do business and then they would go do business with somebody else. <laughs> And that really confused me and it made me almost, it made me mad at my friends. It made yeah. me mad. And I thought, what is wrong? And uh, so I got into real estate and I, I struggled so much. So I thought, well, you know, here, when you struggle here, there's always that line of thought, well, maybe I'm in the wrong company. I need to switch companies. Right? Yeah. So, or I'm doing the wrong thing, selling the wrong thing. So. I, I thought, I'm going to go into real estate. Somebody had mentioned it to me, and uh, I did the math, right? I mean, everybody does the math. I was like, oh, my God, if I sell a $200,000 home, that 6% commission, that's $12,000. I split that up a little bit. I'm going to make a lot of money. I mean, that's just where my head went. And I thought, anybody can sell at least one a month, you know? So if I sell one a month, what if I sell two? What if I sell? 
But I got into real estate after doing the math and I struggled again. And I did more math once I got into real estate because, okay, in Omaha, this is, Dr. Hank, this is in Omaha, the year before I got into real estate, $60 million was paid out in commissions in wow. Omaha to brokers and realtors. I mean, that's a lot. I thought, geez, I just want a part of that, right? But I did the research. There's over there was over 2,400 realtors in Omaha, and I thought, <laughs> okay, 2,000 of them are selling. You divide that into the 60 million dollars, and you got poverty wages. You got everybody's only going to make. There's only 30 thousand dollars available per person for a year. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, I've gotten in the wrong business again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I. I tell you what I did is I interviewed the top realtors in Omaha that you had right. mentioned earlier, we were talking that we're making a million dollars a year. Yeah. And, and what blew me away is one is they had time to meet with me. Just, they had the time on the calendar and I'll never forget the meeting I had with this woman. She was very successful. I, I asked her, I said, how can you be so successful with all of this competition and she just laughed at me. She goes, Steve, there is no competition. Right on. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? There's over 2,000 realtors. And she said, you need to listen to me. She goes, it doesn't work like that. She go, and I go, well, how does it work then? She says, it's simple. She goes, people will only sell as much as they think they're worth. And most people don't think they're worth much, so they don't sell much. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I got to tell you, Dr. Hank, that rocked my world. That scared me. Yeah, you scared bet. Me a little bit. Yeah, because I had to look at myself. Go ahead. You know, yeah. people um, have ceilings, and we we create our own glass ceilings. And doesn't matter what color, what sex you are, nothing. None of that matters. You know, we've had a black president, or you know, we've had women that have excelled at this thing. You know, running for president. Okay, so it doesn't matter about any of that. That what it matters is what your ceiling is, and most of us don't even understand it. And it goes into beliefs and everything. But what I have found is that most people are at about thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. And that's about it. So when I would coach with people, I would literally, within two months, I'd make them that much money, and then they'd go away because they, they, hit, they, hit, they hit it. You know, they hit it. And so I have people like you and I know, Ryan Shea, where after the first month of, of joining me, and everybody could go to DocHankWebinar.com to, you know, see more details about that. But in four months, this guy was doing – Four over four million dollars, and so he didn't have that glass ceiling, okay? And he has it wide open. So help us on how do we take that? How do we remove that glass ceiling? How do we how do we recognize who we really are? These magnificent creative beings that with our thought can create anything, and all things are possible. How do you help us in order to get to that point, Steve? Yeah, that's that's a great question. That's like the the multi million dollar question. I, you know, I I got into the vision boards and uh, I would make it and I wouldn't get it. <laughs> and I mean, I would look at that thing and I would get all excited. And uh, let's, you got yours? Oh wow! I just yeah. like the pure joy on there. I I you really yeah. emanate that. So, but I wasn't getting there. I, I I made this beautiful board and I wasn't getting there. And what I what I noticed, um, see, I I I I really didn't know understand how to create a powerful experience with another human being that would have them want to do business with me. Wow. Right. I, I really missed what I didn't get that part. And what I would say about that is that, you know, when we th everybody says that sales is about relationships and interesting, because if you ask somebody what that means, they really don't know how to explain it. I mean, it's right. going to take them a while to come up with an answer. And isn't that funny that you should know that first and foremost, that should be a priority, what it, what that means to you and what it means to your prospect. Yeah. And I, and what it means to a lot of people is that, is they want to be liked. Mm. Their focus on the relationship is to get the person to like them. 
And, you know, that's kind of creepy, <laughs> you know, for, for lack of better words, it's kind of, it's a turnoff. It comes from a needy place mm. and it really is not useful and it creates an experience in the other human being that your prospect that has them not want to do business with you. And I found out this was really hard for me to admit, but I was a Marine for eight years. I was a tough guy, yeah. but I was also very emotionally needy and I didn't realize it until I got into yeah. sales. And sure. I think there's no better opportunity for personal growth than to be in sales. Cause like I said, it's not for wimps. Yeah. And, and what I found, there's two things that, that really get in the way for people in sales, for human beings, and that is, I want to be liked and I want approval. And, and underneath of that, Dr. Hank, is this, is this human thing. And that is that, is that the sense that I'm, I'm not enough. You know, and it, it is just this trace of it underneath that holds a place in us and is always a play. It's, it, it's always a play in human beings. And there's, I, I can go in and be a people pleaser and try to really get this person to like me to fill that. Yeah. Or I can, I, can, I can maybe go the other direction and just try to really hide it by really being strong and going after it and, you know, really gauging with it. Yeah, yeah. But e either way, here's what my experience is that either way that I go about it, I, I could dress up in a million dollars, $20,000 suit, and I tell women, you can look beautiful, you can look sexy and gorgeous and glamorous. And when you step in the room, your prospect is going to have a biological experience of that. But eventually who you really are is going to show up in that room. Yeah. And you really want to focus on that part of you. Because mm. if you don't go within and look at yourself, you'll go without. And that's something that I'd never, I've never had conversations like that before. I, I always thought you had to dial the phone as much as you can, get a thousand people in your pipeline. You know, it was that real go get them. And, and it was it was kind of forceful as opposed to just being able to really know what it's like to be with somebody, yeah. a way of being that creates a beautiful experience, a powerful experience between you and another human being where you can get to the truth because yeah. it really serves the relationship and the client. Yes. So and I, so just, I said a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, and you said a lot of uh, fantastic things. And so a couple things and that you said go with it. And see, Christ said this, that, you know, it, it, we've been told this a million times. The kingdom is within. And when we tap into who we are within, we understand the magnificence of who we are. And we be, when we become authentic, instead of the way we were trained to be and how we're supposed to, oh, be smiling and do whatever, and that, you know, all this fluff that people see through that fluff and it's really our vibration it's how we vibrate are you you know authentic are you uh, uh secure uh uh confident you know those those wonderful brilliant words so can you share with us how did you or how do we how do you teach others how do you teach these high-end realtors agents that how do you teach them to go within and then what do they find from there and the outcome of that yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. So it's it, to unpack that, uh, I would say, you know, well, let's take something simple. And I, I'll tell you a, a moment in real estate that really had me see that I, I showed up the way I showed up really created the person not wanting to do business with. Me. That is, I, I would go to a listing appointment. And I would, you know, I did my work, man. I mean, I did the research. I had my paperwork ready. I did the math. And that house, man, at best is 450000 At best, right? And I'm going in there with the $450,000 pitch. And uh, he says, well, I think it's worth 500000 The client says this, right? He says, yeah. because the guy down the street sold his house for this, and it's not as nice as mine, right? Sure. And then the other guy in the neighborhood that way, he sold his house, and it's not as nice as mine. Right. And I, I was like, I would say, I would show him my case, but he'd say, no, I think it's worth that much. And I would say, okay. And I'd take the listing because I knew if I didn't take the listing, somebody else would get it. Uh -huh. So so you know what happened. You know the end of this story, and that is that it sat on the market. And what happened is I didn't want to call him. He's wondering why I wasn't calling. He's mad at me and all of that. Uh -huh. 
And it would just, it would just, the relationship would end in failure. And it started off very out of a line, very, the integrity was not in the relationship. There was no alignment. There was no commitment to truth. I just wanted the listing. And I took it. And so what happened, I, I'm totally convinced that when a relationship starts off out of alignment and messy, it just gets worse. Yeah. And it gets it gets unworkable. And those turned into failure and they're ready to fire me. So I finally got tired of that and I went into a listing. Same thing happened. It was a five hundred thousand dollar home. I said, it's not, you know, I mean I have the numbers, I did the math. He said, I want I think it's worth five fifty. And, and Dr. Hank, I literally, at this time, I didn't care. I took my fist, I hit it on the table. I said, I said, no. And he just back, he just kind of backed in and goes, what are you talking about? And I said, listen here. I said, here's what's going to happen. We'll list it for 550. It's going to sit on the market. It's not going to sell. You're going to hate me. I'm going to hate you. Or we're not going to like each other. It's going to be a mess. And he goes, oh, okay. He says, well, then let's list it for 500. Oh, that's right. Great. So, see, I, I found something that, See, realtors, we, realtors, salespeople leave the meeting most of the time wishing they would, they did, they left so much unsaid that would have been so helpful. And the reason they leave it left unsaid is because they're afraid that they'll put too much pressure on the person by having that conversation of what, what's really true, right? It's really true and they, they can't get there. So, so when I work with salespeople, I'm like, you know, listen, I, I just, when, I said, what we're talking about is a lot. I said, you look in the cock, I used to fly from the airlines. If you look in the cockpit of a, an airliner, and I used to have people come, you know, when they'd walk out, they'd look in the cockpit. Right. And they'd say, oh my God, look at all those gauges. How can you ever fly out this thing? Right. And I say, well, fortunately, we don't have to use them all at once, right? <laughs> you use them one at a time. Yeah. And so what I have, I have, uh, when I work with salespeople, I says, let's just take one thing yeah, and let's just cool. take a look at it. And I said, if we, if, what we'll do is that one thing will have such a profound effect on you that it will lead you and have you wanting to, to expand on that. But yeah. I said, if I give you too much, you're going to get overwhelmed and you're not right. going to fly. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I love yeah. that analogy too. And it's, you know, and it's a jet that I love that whole Jet and we're all jets and we can take off and fly to the blue skies, you know, but it's all a matter of us doing that. So can you give uh, examples just to kind of entice uh, uh, our audience here that, um, so what have you done for real estate agents? So I love this approach that you basically looked at, you know, one thing on where they needed to be authentic, tell their truth, you know, stand up for who they are and not be fear, not have a fear of loss. And that's the, your exact words. You said fear of loss. And that's that's right on. And so um, can you give just some uh, examples of how you have helped agents to increase their business, you know, how much it has been or, you know, where they were, where they are today. I saw some Facebook things on with a whole team of agents that were kind of thanking you and, you know, say, hey, we're, you know, number one in our area or whatever. So um, can you give us some of that so that we can kind of understand on uh, yeah. get a good return on investment with you? And your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, um, I'm not a marketing guy. I, you know, I'm not an operations guy, but I, what I'm really love and I just have an affinity for, and that is to create powerful relationships. And what I, and, and this is really big. And, and again, it's that really, when you look at yourself, how do people experience you out there? Do they experience you as being someone who's emotionally needy, who needs approval, or are you someone who can speak to that person at an elevated, from an elevated place so they have something to come up to? They, you know, I, I always say that it, it wouldn't serve them unless you're willing to challenge the relationship. And what, what that looks like in real estate is that is you, you shouldn't lose a listing. If someone wants to sell their home and they're going to list it. They, they, there's no reason they shouldn't list it with you. I mean, yeah. if step into that meeting like you matter. But what I mean by that is that the reason you matter is because, you know, one, you really believe in what you do. 
you're going to change their life. I mean, what you have to offer, it's like you're, you've got the cure for cancer. You're stepping into that meeting and they're going to have this incredible experience, but it's not in what you say. You know what I mean? That's the challenge. It's, it's not in the information that you have in your little folder or your little presentation. It's the way they experience you that you really get them. See, there's this whole idea that knowledge is power in that. And I think if you could, if you, that knowledge is useful, but what's really powerful is when they feel like you really get them. You know, to be with a client, a prospect, and, and, and what happens is that they will have such an incredibly powerful experience of you that they, they wouldn't want to do business with anybody else. You see what I mean? There's like an experience happening and it's not in the information. It's not in uh, this great packet, this great market analysis you've done. It's like, man, look this person and, and serve them and say, please help me understand. Why do you want to sell your home? Why is that important to you? Yeah. And, and, and take that as like, when, when someone expresses why they want to do something, oh my God, get into that. Tell me more about that. You, so you were, the reason you want to move is because you got this great opportunity in California. Wow, tell me more about that. And when do you need to move by and when? And have you worked with a realtor before? And what was that like? But here's the thing, these aren't just questions. Yeah. These are ways for, this person to express the truth of how they are experiencing this. Mm -hmm. So when you fully understand the truth, they're going to know if you get them or not. Yeah. You know, they're you know, Steve, know I'm, I, I'm sitting here taking notes after notes and I, I'm going to encourage my audience as we always do every week, take notes on this guys. This is, <laughs> this is the spice, you know, this is what you've been looking for. And even though, you know, on first blush, you may say, oh, no, but I want to, you know, have the perfect listing presentation or whatever. It's not about that. And that's what Steve is saying. And this is what elevates you to this next level. The level you want in 2019 is to take it and really to get into what their why and quit thinking about you and if you're liked or whatever from what you're telling me, right? That quit thinking about that. Instead, think about, hey, I really want to get to know this person. I want to have a powerful experience with this person. I want to understand their why, their head, because everybody has different needs and desires. And so it's nothing about you and it's everything about them. And is that a good way to kind of summarize that and what you do yeah. is you help people to really change their mindset about walking into a relationship and how to build that relationship. Is that it? Yeah. So, you know, you, what you said was incredible. It was what you said was a lot. And um, so, and what, what I would ha typically when we talk about, when I talk about this, I, it's real. It's like a mountain with no top. It's like this. Really see that you can even you can create even more of a powerful experience. And typically, what happens is that we really want them to know what we know because if they know what we know, they'll be convinced and then they'll want to use us, right? right. It's, yeah. it's kind of and that's. And that's boring. That's just boring and it's creepy and it's messy and, and yeah. it's not useful. Right. And I will tell you that most of my deals, and I, I sell sales training now, and uh -huh. I, I get contracts, people write me checks, and they, they don't even know what my program's about. <laughs> now think about that. Think about what I just said. Uh -huh. I could be with them in a way that yeah. they're like, Oh my God! Yeah, I want to work with you. Yeah, yeah. And they don't even. And they say, and then they say, oh, by the way, what are we gonna do? <laughs> so this idea of closing, like, like people want to learn how to close, and I'm like, you know, we don't. That's something. A close is not a strategy. A close is something that happens as a result of the experience that they have with you, right? Yeah, and and that experience is going to be 
if you really, really get what's going on with them. Wow, that's huge. I My biggest thing is to get salespeople to shut up. <laughs> you know, I, see, I was a rock star at meeting. I really, I was a rock star at being emotionally needy. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I that's why sad. you were liked. That's why you were liked. Everybody liked, but didn't do any business with you. You know, they say, hey, we're going to go to this other guy. But man, you're fun to be with. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody wanted coffee with me and meet with me and, and network yeah. with me. And then, and then they do somebody else. But I was really, I was, I, I, I want to use the word pathetic, but I don't want to use that word I'm, because yeah. <laughs> it's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, there's a better way to move forward that would create a better experience for you. And, you bet. And that's work. That's work. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, so, so a couple of things, and I just got God bumps all over me. Most people call them goosebumps, but some of the things you said, like go to the mountain with no top. And so I want all of us to think about, this is what I'm doing in 2019. I'm going to the mountain and I'm going to, if there is no summit, that I'm going to go to the mountain with no top and go to things beyond my current imagination that I've even, you know, dreamed about. And, um, uh, and, and, you know, get off this thing about telling everyone about what you know, and instead um, that a close, and I love this, a close is what happens because of the experience. So we want to have a good experience and to create a good experience is to understand where they're at and by doing that. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm summarizing and hopefully accurately on, on what you're, uh, and what's going on with them and to understand what's going on with them. So this to me is, is powerful, but I want to move on to two quick other things before we leave here. First of all, will you please give us your contact information so people that, because you are, you know, like I think you said it right there where people will buy your purchase here, you'll have a close on your sales process and, and training, and they don't even know what they're buying because what they know is who you are and their experience was a good experience with you. So what, what how's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, thank you. I, I got to tell you, um, this is kind of funny. I don't have a business card and I don't have a website. All I, right. And that is because I, I want to prove, I want to prove that this works. And, and that is that I'm about, I'm about contact, get on the phone, talk to people. So the best way to get a hold of me yeah. uh, is to call me and my number, I'll just say it is 402-215-715. Uh, yeah, 215-7118. Okay, and great. my email is uh, Steve Tornayton at gmail.com. And I, the, I can spell that if you like. Sure, go uh, ahead. Yeah. Okay, so Steve is S T E V E. Tornayton is T O R N E T E N at gmail.com. Uh -huh. That's great. That's and great. That's the best way to get home. Yeah. Yeah. That's super. So we only have about five more minutes. But in that okay. five minutes, I'd like to discuss two things that uh, I think is uh, going to help us all to get into the kingdom within us and really to get in uh, within. And uh, that is your perspective on meditation, maybe a little about why it's effective and maybe what you do. And then also on RIM and to just briefly, and again, we have about two minutes on each subject, but could you give us just a little taste on, let's start with meditation. Steve, what, why is meditation, why is this something that you focused on and that you have in your bio and that you help people with that? Um, what, what's about meditation? How do you do meditation? Yeah, and, and I don't do it well. Um, uh, and what I mean is that I'm, what I'm aware of in meditation is that I have this mind that is, wants to think constantly, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, what I'm aware of through meditation is that the mind also – is uh, is all the past, everything in my past wants to come up. It's like the mind has to have a problem in order yeah. to exist. And what I've seen it, 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 is that it's hard to grow spiritually with the mind. It's the ego, it's the persona that wants to have a problem to exist. And so I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware. I don't know that meditation is the answer for me, but it's really increase my awareness of, of uh, the mind and yeah. I, yeah, yeah. And then, and then in the ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so if I can um, just a couple of comments on that, that 
Uh, so the, the mind basically is used to determine what we want and what we don't want. It's not there to determine the how. That's why, for example, Christ said, the Father does the work. We just need to pray, ask for what we want, and then we'll receive it. And so, but what has happened is our mind keeps on clicking and clipping and clipping. And so the reason why that meditation, why you're, you know, enjoying it and embracing it is because in meditation, even though that I call it the committee in our head, the worry, fear, yeah. doubt, complaining, blaming, that, that little committee keeps on going that you can actually start just asking to be quiet, you know, settle down. And what you ask for instead is I want to be tapped into the divine mind. And yeah. that's where we can get the answers and the solutions to everything that you have wanted. And we'll start flowing just these magnificent thoughts. And the more that you can feel good, the more good feeling thoughts are. And those good feeling thoughts are the solutions and the answers really to your dream. So, um, and then just uh, again, briefly on what do you do as far as how do you meditate? Can you share with us, you know, do you do it every morning uh, for how yeah. long? And listen to music or what? How's your meditation? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. See, I, I meditated for, geez, almost 15 years. Yeah. And uh, what I do now is I, I don't, I, I set time aside to really, uh, I, I follow spiritual leaders that really inspire me and I set time aside for that input. And then what I do with my meditation today, uh, Dr. Hank, is that I really want to get what's going on with you. I mean, there's no better meditation. I can't put it to better use than to have another human being where I can, I can actually now put this practice to use and I can be with you and leave me out of the way. That way we can elevate our experience together. Yeah, so that's what I would say about it. I, I, I decided to put it to use and I love to read. I love to follow leaders that inspire me, that elevate me, that, that show me higher levels of consciousness of being, not in a way that, that I'm less than or I'm not good enough for that, not because yeah. I'm not like that, but as an opening to what's possible. Good. Yeah. That's great. That's and do you have one or, two other, uh, one or two names you could give us on who you follow? Yeah, I, I'm in love with uh, Dr. Hawkins, David R. Hawkins. He wrote the book uh, Power Versus Force. Okay. And Transcending Levels of Consciousness. Uh, he's been, lately I've been listening to him a lot. So I would say if you're somebody who wants to really get a feel for the difference between power and force, uh, you know, uh, that'd be a great opportunity. Yeah, great. And then, um, and then, can you share with us? And again, the, that topic. I mean, you and I can talk, speak for hours, and I, and it just warms my heart that uh, you know you just wanted to uh, be able to better understand me, and you know, to get you out of the way, and for all of us to have that mindset. It's way to connect with this, and how to the, the end result. I mean, most of us are saying, "Oh, I want more business." This is how to do it. And I know it's not the answer that you thought it would be, but it is in fact the way to do it. And think of this, that when you're thinking in a meditation and you're thinking things like, I want to attract, you know, uh, uh, listings into my business. I want to attract wonderful buyers that are easy to work with, have lots of money and that do as I suggest, you know, and as you become intentional, you become a magnet and they'll come out of the blue. And literally angels are delivering us miracles every moment. But for us to be able to experience that, and that's where you're saying, I got to get out of the way to allow my angels to give me all the good stuff, all the goodies I've been asking for. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, if we can, uh, can just share with us a little about RIM, what is it and why is it helpful and how do you do that? Yeah, RIM is a beautiful thing that came into my life. Uh, I'd had a lot of trauma in my life. A lot of trauma, childhood abuse. Um, uh, learned to read and write when I was 19. I really had some bad things happen, some things that destroyed me as a child. So I was really not even functional. I, at 19, I couldn't even spell my name. I couldn't give you the 12 months of the year. I couldn't talk to people. I didn't know enough of the English language. So I was wow. very lucky though that I had some, some men come into my life that, that were willing to put their arms around me say this is, you know, 
we know what's going on, but uh, uh, we love you. And so, uh, and then I went, of course, you take that into the Marine Corps and it, it doesn't make it better, right? So <laughs> when I got out of the Marine Corps in 1996, I had a lot of work to do. And yeah. I was very fortunate. I met guys like Jack Canfield who introduced me to Dr. Deb Sandella. And what happened, this is the most beautiful thing. I, I'm not one, uh, I don't do therapy, I do, I, I wanted to do the work necessary to really clean up what's in my, what holds me back? What is it in the past that really has weight to it that's really holding me? And I don't want to live in the past anymore, but I realized I need to do the work because I got married and it was getting in the way of my marriage of being a father. And I knew, I knew that if I did it, I knew I was the problem. Yeah. And I knew that I, I made a commitment. I'll do whatever it takes to do whatever it takes to move forward. And, and what that looks like, I don't even know. Yeah. And you know how that works is you really open yourself up to the universe. Right. And what happened is that all the things that I made fun of in my life, that I criticized, that I thought was kind of sissy, silly, ridiculous, woo woo, whatever, I did it. I said, I'm going to do it all. <laughs> and I jumped in and I, I met uh, Dr. Deb Sandella. And she has this incredibly powerful way of organically, you, your body and your psyche knows what it needs to get rid of. It knows it, yeah. but you don't know it. You don't right. know it. It's too right. much for it. So she was able to work with me in a way that I, I got to really heal all of that. That's now, I want to. I'll wrap it up with this, and that is no. my father, when I was a child, I hated him so bad that I, I knew that I was going to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it was just going to happen, and I knew how it was going to happen. Sure. And, uh, uh, and I, my father is 81 today, and uh, I just adore this man. I, <laughs> love him. I adore him. I want to see him. I want to be seen by him. I want to talk to him. It's just love yeah. that I didn't know existed for me. Wow. And I didn't know it was available until somebody helped me open that doorway to, to let go of the pain. And then again, it's about moving on from the past, being drawn to something beautiful instead of being driven by the past. And I wanted to do whatever it took to get out, to break away from that, to where I could really move into a direction and feel, cease, like you, you allude to this a lot. And that is just, you call it this angelic, this beautiful, blessful, opening that we have to life and it's right. all new and it creates yeah. tons of possibilities. So hmm. that's what I would say about that. I, I hope that was useful. That That's great. Yeah. And then how do we find out about RIM, R-I-M, that uh, uh, yeah. is there something, do you have something uh, that you can uh, give to people then if they email you? Well, they can call me, email me, or they can go to the riminstitute.com. I think it is rim. Look up rim institute, R A M institutes in Denver. And okay. uh, there's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, that's fantastic. Well, with that, uh, still, uh, Steve Tornayton, we have just absolutely enjoyed this. That uh, you really are a man of heart and uh, sharing your story. What a moving story. And, uh, and, you know, we've all had challenges, and those challenges actually are the blessings because it, it propelled you to this magnificent state now to where you're a blessing to the, the world. And I just thank you so much for being my guest today that, again, you can uh, reach out to Steve, and uh, he can help you not only become a an awesome agent, uh, broker, you know, do more, more business, sell more, but uh, can also help you heal you. And probably all of us have a little of that to where, uh, you know, we all want to feel better. And so Steve is our man to go to. So with that, thank you so much, Steve, for being on the show. You rock, baby. <laughs> well, I, I want to say something to you, and that is thank you for, for who you are, Dr. Hank, and the way that yeah. you serve the world, the way you serve human beings. It, it, you can really feel it. It says a lot about you. And I, I know that uh, your, your listeners are changing the world. And, and, and if they listen to these podcasts and they listen to them maybe a couple times. Yeah, yeah. You know, they yeah. get a really sense of that. And I, I thank you for all that you do. Yeah, Amazing. well, thank you. And see, and it's these thoughts that we've given you today, folks, the thoughts in order to take you to the happiness, the success that you want. So this is Dr. Hank. 
from Agent Wealth Success. Wishing you all the best. Just expect this day, these moments, and this week in 2019 to be the best ever. Love you all. Take care.